present here. Juliet Mwine and your family, the bishops and the clergy who are here today, relatives of Eli Tumwine, friends and all people of goodwill present here. Today, we gather together, first of all, to thank God for Eli's life. And we come together to bring our heartfelt condolences also to the family of Eli Tumine and to stand with them. In this hour of grief for having lost a loved one. The NRM and UPDF family celebrate the life of Eli Tumine for his outstanding service among the leaders of officers and men who are distinguished force of UPDF. And for the family of Eli Tumine, I know that there is nothing that can comfort you or fill the gap that Tumine has left behind in your family, having been the head of that family. And your husband is to join. I believe I can say that I understand the emptiness of that experience because I lost my own father when I was only seven years old. And I know the insecurity of a home <coughs> without a father. But since I found Jesus, I know that there is a father who will never die. And I'm so grateful to him that Tumine's children have testified with their words there that they know that father who will never die. That has been my faith foundation and my strength having met that father who can never die. Who is with you 24 seven, who promises that he will never leave you nor forsake you. He's the one who can fill that gap and also provide the security that is real and can be trusted and, and can only come from him. I'm happy to know that you know that, Father Jolie, and I'm confident that if you stick with that Father, I have no doubt in my mind that you will find the peace that only he can give. And I'm happy to have listened to your children and to your son who used his own father's words that you will manage. I have no doubt in my mind that you will manage because of that father I'm talking about who you all know. Otherwise, I will repeat the words that many have said here that come from Timothy 2, chapter 2, verse 4 to 7, that says that Tsumine, in quotes, he has fought a good fight, he has finished his race, and he kept to the faith. The Bible says that there is a crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to all those on that day 
who loved his appearing. That is the only comfort we can all give you, Jole and your family. And they remind you that Tumwine is now in a better place. That will give you some comfort and some happiness. We all hope, as Mugume said, to go to that place someday, each in our own time. And we know that we will miss Tumine, all of us seated here, but we believe that he has gone, gone to a better place. And we're grateful that he has achieved his mission, as many of you have testified. Mukama Mene Mwe, Kanda Renwe Abagunya, our head is of Sinjo Way, Wense Taini, Kanda No Mwe Suba, Nemo Messiji, Mueva the Comforters. Thank you. Thank you, Mama. Let me now take this singular honor and privilege to invite His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Uganda, and the Chief of Mona today to deliver his eulogy. Your Excellency, sir. Uh, his Lordship, the Chief of Justice, The Right Honourable Deputy Prime Minister, Ministers, Members of Parliament, the bereaved family, Members of UPDF, Members of the Diplomatic Corps, Now Kungu Bazimwe Na, First of all, I express on behalf of the NRM, of the UPDF, of the country, condolences to the family of General to the widow, to the children, and to the family, to the family members, accept our heartfelt condolences. Secondly, unfortunately, we have also lost some other people. We lost one of our traditional chiefs in Usoga. Goro Goro, who was the chief of uh, Chiguru. They told me about him the other day. We have also lost the Honorable Yona Kanyo Mozi, who was a minister in the UPC government, but between 1971-79, he was one of our contacts in Nairobi. He was not a, a fighter, but he was a contact. I, I used to pass by his office in the ex telecom house in Nairobi. So I asked the mourners to stand up and to observe A moment of silence for the late Yona Kanyomozi, whom I came to know this morning as I was coming here, and Goro Goro. May the Almighty God rest their souls in eternal peace. Amen. The year 
1967. I think it must, must have been the month of March. I had finished A-level in 1966, end of the year. And those days, there was a shortage of teachers. So whenever students finished S-4 or S-6, they would be offered jobs to teach, pending going to further studies later. The university those days would start in July. So you had time to teach from end of January uh, up to the beginning of July. I had therefore got a teaching job. Initially I went to Rukoni because I had already started my my, my activism, our activism, we were a group, it was not just me, we were quite a number. Our, act, our activism of wanting to cause social economic change among the traditional society. I hear some people calling uh, Those people, peasants, those, those people are not peasants. They, some of them are actually rich, but they were still living in the traditional way. Traditional way of Okora Echida Kionka, working only for the stomach. That was the problem. Teach me each keken as we say in law. So I had wanted to go to, I went to Rukoni. I was posted there by the education officers who were in Barara. Somebody called Kitandwe posted me there, Rukoni. I, I, I'm the one who asked me to go to Rukoni because I had wanted to go and work among those people. But when I go there, they were not enthusiastic. They were quite laid back. So I went back to the education office in Mbarara, and I found uh, Nyanda there. Nyanda, he died recently. I said, I want you to send me to Nyabushozi to teach there. Nyanda said, Nyabushozi is very far. Nujoku Jivasa. Will you manage Nyabushozi? It's very far. Then he looked on, on the map at the wall, said there was one position at Chinoni. Chinoni, this Chinoni of Gempehe. But it has been taken by somebody else. Now the only post, position which is there is in Burunga. Burunga is very far. You will not manage it. I said, that's why I want to go. Where people don't go, that's why I want to go. <laughs> and, and indeed, Burunga is, is quite far from Barara. It is 90 miles. You can imagine like from, from Kampara here to, 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 to Vujiri, where would you get 90 miles? Igang is 75, it must be like Wujiri. That's how far it is. So I said, no, I want, I want to go there. So I, the, he posted me there. It must have been much, because I had spent a month at, at, uh, at uh, uh, Rokoni. Now, when I got there, I found these people actually were semi-traditional. They were not as traditional as the ones of Rukoni, because some of the Rukoni were still Bakafiri. 
not had not joined the the modern religion. But these ones of Burunga, as Enos Musime was saying, they were all, many of them were Barokore, were church people, church and born again, but they had no idea about income generation. Very little, very, very, no clear way of how to become a modern society. And that's, that was our mission. Of course, we had a little bit of, uh, when I come to churches, I always listen to, to the messages, which I, pa I partially share, not wholly. The, even, even that time we had, we had those mixed messages, because some of those who are local were saying, here we are visitors on earth. Almost three hours journey. Okay, you two are here. You and Tora, you move guru. Our permanent home is in heaven. Mm -hmm. That's all right. <laughs> then, have you seen no mushy? What the things are? Uh, like they think the way I'm going to think of machine is useless. Actually, it's a very useful machine. <laughs> so you can see how confused they are. <laughs> but for them, a machine means something useless. <laughs> the, real, the real gifts are in heaven. Uh -huh. So, what do we do? Like my late father, Mze Kaguta died when he was 97. Now to get a visitor of 97 years, he's just a visitor waiting to go to heaven. Uh, actually, I was a member of the scripture union. But those are some of the reasons why I withdrew from the scripture union. <laughs> and stood aside. So, but I will say something about that later. So, when I was, when I went to teach, that's why I found these, these young people, Tumuine, Endos there, uh, others, they're also there, there, there are quite a number of others, but, but they were there. So I was teaching them, but I was also interested in the, in the, in the society, how to change that, I, and I tried to tell them about this. It's a long story, but that's how I came to, and, and this to win eh? Actually, one day followed me. I went and uh, I spent a night at one of the pe younger people called Buandanda. He was somewhere there towards the river. And I was telling him about social economic transformation, commercial farming, doing commercial farming, commercial farming with each other. The message we are giving now, this PDM. Parish development model, that's what we were telling them. So that, that's where I saw Tumuina as a student. I think it was like in P7. I think Enos was in P6 or something like that. There was another a brother of, of Enos called Enoka. They were quite, and, and, and other young people. So that's how I, I first saw Tumwine. And Tumwine followed me at Bandada's place. He, he told me later that uh, he had me, me I didn't remember, but he told me that he had me preaching to this Bandada man about social economic transformation. 
Now, much later, 1979, when we captured Mbarara, you heard how we started recruiting uh, that big number of recruits, 9,000 of them, whom were recruited in that area. And Tumwine was, was one of them. And then we said, people are finished all level and above can go for office academic school in Monduri, in Tanzania. The ones from Fronasa, the ones from Mopoti's group, Chikos Maru, but I think they also included the new recruits. That's how the Katumbas joined, who are not part of, of, of Fronasa or Chikos Maru. So they went to Monduri, 300 of them, then other, other people went to Jinja for senior NCO course. People like General Ivan Coretta and uh, General Sare, they went for senior NCO course. Then they were also commissioned when they, when they came out. Now, our politics was not settled. So we had to now prepare for a new fight because our, our partners of UPC were playing games. They didn't, know what, they didn't care what had happened in the years of Amin. They wanted to start again. We warned them. They, they, I, I don't know what they thought. Then we, we, we started planning for a new fight to really see how to rescue this country because life was so insecure. People were, they, they were it, it was heading towards the darkness, where people didn't care about, to, about life. Now, when we attacked, now that attack of Kabamba, and I don't, I don't know how I, I will link up with the church people, so that we can talk the same language. I don't know whether I will write a small document. You, you see, the, my experience, I have seen two things. First, and I, I keep telling Mama, because in the book of Genesis, God created us, you remember, on Saturday, that gentleman, Adam, you remember that Adam? <laughs> Created him on Saturday, and his wife, wife, I think a few hours later. The, the, he created Adam in the image of God, and he gave him the mandate in the book of Genesis it says to establish dominion over nature. Yeah. You are not just a creature, you are not you are not like the cow, you are not like the goat, you are not like the pig. <laughs> you are created in my own image of God. And I command you to establish dominion over nature. That is really the. But what when you do whatever you do, you do it for the glory of God and for the benefit of man. And when Jesus came, he repeated this. I, I don't know why the religious people don't bring it out. He said, love God with all your heart, with all your might, the, the, two, the two summary of the commandments. And love the, your neighbor as you love yourself. So God and neighbor. And the mandate to, to, to establish dominion of nature. In, in, in our NRM language, we say taming nature, to tame nature. 
Now, these walls of ours, you can really see the two, the, the, the two, the two sides. And even our traditional people, they say, Rubare Mbera, name the report a day. Uh -huh. Now, that attack, we talk of the attack of the 6th of February, where Tumwine fired the first shot. That journey, you could see the hand of God and the efforts of man together. Because the plan was we drove from here on, in the evening of the 5th in a lorry with the fighters in the back of the lorry with the Tunduari like bananas. And the plan was get because we had internal, internal collaborators within the barracks. Get, get to the quarter guard, the, the gate, and deceive the gate man. And Tumuni was in front. Tumuni was in front because he was an officer with the, with the Nyota. To say, we are bringing supplies to you people from the headquarters. Then from the quarter guard, drive recently my daughter who is very much interested in Natasha. I told her to go and measure it, measure the distance. And she measured it, I think it is 400 and something meters. So that we deceived the, the gate man that we are bringing supplies and he allows us through but a small car with some Magara and a few people drives past and enters this underground armory. This, this, this armory is concrete, it is underground. Because what we wanted were guns. Maybe there I should tell you something else. Because it's, I, I'm, I'm trying to summarize the wrong story, but I want to know you to know more about because Tumuni is here, we may not get another chance. Because by the time I mean fell on the 11th of April, we had a big force there in about 9,000 people, including the Tumuinis, armed, you know, armed already. So when Amin fell, then we had to form one army with the Obotis, Obotis, Kosmarum, other groups. So we had to surrender our guns to the new army, the, the what, you, you, what you, UNLA, you, Uganda National Liberation Army. Now, some of my people, Led by Otafuire, and that's why I want you to, to. That's why I want you to know about God. Led by Otafuire, they said we should not hand in all our guns. <laughs> because Tomanya, these UPCs may turn against us. So we should hide, like 2,000 guns, hide them somewhere for the rainy day. I rejected that. It was a big struggle. I rejected that. I said, this is terrible. How can I be a member of the Uganda National Liberation Front, a member, member also vice chairman of the military commission, and I take part in hiding guns and say we have handed all the guns when we have not. This is terrible. God does not like it. Principles don't like it. 
and, and also strategically, it is very risky because suppose it leaks now. Who would ever trust us again? So both spiritually, morally, and strategically, it is a mistake. So I rejected Otafuere's idea. It was a big struggle <laughs> because he had a constituency who were, who, were, who were in his line that we should hide some guns. So when the UPC, in their foolishness, turned against us, against, again, like the Tafuris were saying, that they would betray us, now we had the problem how to get our guns again. <laughs> so, but these army officers of ours who had joined, who had joined the joint army, they knew where these guns were. One, 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 one cache, big cache was at Kabamba. Then the other one was at Masindi. Then there was Mubende. Then there was uh, Nakasongora. So when we analyzed, we found it was easier to capture the guns at Kabamba. And that was the whole operation. Get, come with two cars, two, two vehicles, a, a lorry with the, with, the, with, the, with the force in the back, a pickup with, the, with the, some Magara and uh, one, uh, a few other people. Tumwine engages the, the people at the quarter guard in a friendly way. When the, the, while the pickup passes and enters the underground, and we timed to attack at, at 8 a.m. in the morning. Why? Why did we time 8 a.m.? Because first of all, there was a very big force there of trainees by the Tanzanians. Two, I think there were like 2,000 being trained. But we knew that by 8 o'clock, they would have gone away to train. They would not be in the barracks. That was the number one. But the number two, the armor would be open. The armor of people would be cleaning and so on and so forth. So the idea was, we come, the fighting group is in the back of the, of the lorry. I think the lorry was being driven by Rutaya. I think it was Rutaya was driving that lorry and Rutaya. Then the pickup of, of Magara bypasses, enters the, the armory by surprise, and then we get the guns and load them. So, problem number one, and I will show you, you people who don't believe in God or who believe in him in some modified way. <laughs> the first problem, we, we had now arranged that the lorry goes ahead. I stay behind with some Magara. We drive later in, in Magara's uh, pickup and catch up with them. In, in, before Kawamba, to park and wait for the morning because we're going to attack in the morning. We went following the, the lorry, past Masaka. At Katugo, we had passed Katugo a little bit, the tire burst of, of Magara's pickup. It was being driven by a man called Rutarago. <laughs> I think Rutarago is a big man now. I charged him, but he defended himself. So when the tire bus, I thought they had a spare tire. The people did not have a spare tire. <laughs> so what do we do? This is now like 
It was, it was like nine o'clock in the night. We tried to knock at, we could see there were lights in houses. We tried to knock to, to, for to help. They refused to open because they were fearing. So I had now to walk back from Katugondo to Nyendo on foot. When I got to Nyendo, I told, uh, I hired, I, I had money, I hired a, a taxi. They took me to Riondo. Do you remember Riondo? Riondo, the, he was the town clerk of Masaka, the father of Rumumba. You can see how God was in all this, because all this could have misfired, could have. Fortunately, I find Riondo there. I tell him a lie. I think Christianity allows lies. <laughs> for, for, for good purposes. I told him you the lie that I was going for a wedding in Zimbabwe. The car has had a problem. Could he, could he lend me his car? Because they, they, they were going to wait. <laughs> Riondo gave me his, they were, they were vehicles called Pujov 304. Gave it to me. I drove, got to. Now Rutarago says, me, I, I thought I had gone back alone. But Rutarago says we went back together. That one I don't remember. But anyway, we went, went where the pickup was. I think we left the Tarago there. And Magara and myself now drove and found our lorry parked at a junction called Rumejire. There's a junction, Rumejire, there's where you go to, I think Rumiaga. The, 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 the lorry was parked there and people didn't know what was happening. They were worried. So we caught up with them. We drove up to Makore and waited for morning to come. Now I had to sit in the back, in the, in the back, in, in the Tundubari. Because I was a bit well known, I had been a minister and so on. So these soldiers would have suspected me. So that's why Tumwine sat in front to, to deceive the quarter guard, quarter, guard, quarter, quarter guard man and, and we go. So that first, that first firing actually was a mistake. When, when Tumwine fired, it was a mistake. He should not have fired. And, and, and even people were a bit angry with him. You, the, because when we, when we the Lord st stopped at the quarter guard, me, I was in the back. I had the vehicle of Magara passing, going to the driving. Then I had a shot. So when, when Tumwine fired, there was a Tanzanian corporal who was near, near the armory. He had the shot, he, 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 he saw Magara's vehicle rushing, he went inside the armory and got a machine gun. So by the time the group went there, the man was already in, and, and this is a concrete bunker. So after we were blaming Tumwine that he had panicked, he should not have fired, he should have wrestled with the man physically, until the, we had entered the armory. But this is where I want you people to know, you non-believers. Actually, this was God who did this. God, God used Tumwine to fire by, by mistake, actually. But it was God's plan. Why? So anyway, quite a long story short, when the Tanzanians got in the armory, 
our people could not get in. So the, 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 the big guns which were there, we could not get them. They briefed me. I, I, remained, I remained here at the quarter guard. They briefed me. They went in the houses, captured vehicles, captured guns which were in the houses. And I, I decided that now, let, let's move on. Because if we stay here, we, 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 the, the, the government army may counterattack. So we, we got like, like eight lorries, drove and put in some of our recruits, who, of our people, Kamamba, who were collaborating with us, uh, like the late Burgeria Kanyankoro. Kanyankoro was training part of the plan, but, but it was training. But there are others who joined us. And we drove through Kasambia. Then we branched Nabingora, Chenjojo, Kagadi. Then we turned, came to this uh, Chivare, Karuguza, Isimba. We, we went capturing guns from petrol stations. And by 2 a.m. we entered Chiboga town, where we had some collaborators. And ent went and, and camped at a place called Kagobe. This was now the night of the 6th. So the following morning, we were, we were in that Chiboga hills, those Chiboga hills, but we, we had f human power. We were only uh, about 40, about 40 something. The ones who had guns were 27. So the eighth were there. On the ninth, the Tanzanians attacked us. And that's why I'm telling you about God. God used Tumwine to spoil the plan so that we don't capture the guns and the guns are then recaptured by the Tanzanians because we had no manpower to, to, to carry the guns. That's why I'm telling you that really God works in amazing ways. So, although we, we had some argument with Dumine, but we said, okay, we shall arrange again. Now, to cut a long story short, on New Year's Day, 1985, five years later, we now came back for the same guns. But first of all, I had to reconnoiter. I had to send uh, reconnaissance. Is Mugume Chaga here? Mugume Chaga is not here. I had, I had, I had, I had to send uh, Mugume Chaga to, to, to reconnoiter, to check whether those guns were still there. And we had plans, how do we, get, how do we know the guns are there? After four, after four years, this was now like 84, 85, 84. Then we, we made a plan. We, first, we, we, we wanted to capture a soldier, put chloroform in him, make him sleep and take him away. Then I called the messenger. I said, can we do this? Basically, I said, no, if you, if you try to use chloroform when you don't know, you, the, the, the person will die. <laughs> then we said, okay, so how do we know? So, a, again, how, how God works. So, Mugume Chaga went. These soldiers of UNL liked drinking alcohol. So, they would go to a place called Nkonji and drink and come back walking through the, the footpath. So the plan was Mugume puts on gunpoint a soldier who is alone and takes and, and kidnaps him and asks him whether the guns are there or not. So Mugume goes and lies in wait. A lonely soldier comes. Mugume puts him on gunpoint. The, the person whom Mugume puts on his on gunpoint is very well known to Mugume. Can you see how good it works? <laughs> so when Mugume puts him at gunpoint, 
the soldier. Mugumota Anita. Mugume don't kill me, he recognizes him. They, they, they have not seen one another for four years. Then Mugume, uh, the, the soldier was called Tindubachira. So instead of kidnapping him, Mugume says, All I want to know are the guns still there? Tindubachira says, The guns are still there. Uh, so now you go back. They set up a communication system, how they can keep checking. So now, now that we are sure that the guns were still there, now we come now. Big force now, under Sadeh. They are attacking, for, we came with a force of 1,500. But when we got on the way, we started, uh, started breaking. Some soldiers started collapsing and so on. So I decided to cut them into two. A force of 700 under Sare, and I think people like Mugume would have been part of that. 700 all armed to go and, 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 and attack. This time, we used the Magizgawaganda. But Magizgawaganda from Ankore. Muammar Gaddafi had given us land mines which we were using to blow up the UPC people, the soldiers. But this time we were many with a few. So I told them, I said, what you do? Because the soldier may do like what the Tanzanian did. May, may run into the underground armory and not allow you to go there, even if you have captured the barrack. So I, I, I told them, Echiteko, Echiteko is a, a size of mesh where they, keep, they put milk pots. I think Bishop Ruel saw them the other day. It improved his knowledge. So I told them to put the the mine in a kiteko, in, in, a, in a, a mesh of kamba, and suspend it and put it at the mouth of the of, 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 of the amari because you can be on top. It is, it is underground, and then detonate it so that you kill the other person. You, you for me, I thought I didn't know you to, to kill. I thought it would disorient. So that's what they did when Sare came. The force was so big, the soldiers of the barracks ran away. This is now New Year's Day, 1985. The guns we failed, which God saved on the 6th of February, they are still there. So on New Year's Day, 1985, Sare comes with a big force, puts the, the, these soldiers run away. But a soldier goes inside wanting to repeat what the Tanzanians did, what the Tanzanians did. But the, we had arranged, they put the kiteko, pushed it from up with the, with, with the long <coughs> stick, and detonated. The, 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 fellow, the poor fellow died there. And we got all the 650 rifles. So you can see now, Tumwine, God used the Tumwine really to, to make us start the war, but not go too far before we were ready. And kept the guns for us for 1985. This is Tumwine now being used by God. Secondly, Tumwine, when in the reorganization, he was posted in Masindi. So he knew, he knew the Masindi barracks very well. And in the, in, the, in the plan to attack, we had looked at Masindi. But from the quarter guard to the, to the armory, very far, about one and a half kilometers, 
That's why we went for Kawamba instead. But but to move a new machine, so we planned for it. And Tumwine linked us with a man called Kaka. You know Kaka? Kaka recently was in Iso, he had some issues, but he, he did a very good job. This Kaka was, uh, I don't know what he was, he was a civilian in the town of Masindi. So, Tumwine told us there is a contact called Kaka. We, got, we went and, and got him. He came and joined us. I, I don't remember how he, he came. But when he came, we found that Kaka knew Masindi. Now, among the people working in the barracks was a grass cutter. This grass cutter knew everything about the barracks. He would sleep there, he would work, work, cut during the day and go and sleep outside. Now, Kaka recruited this one. So again, we knew the guns were there from the grass cutter. But the problem was, how were the barracks at night? Because we were going to attack very early in the morning. Were the soldiers ready? So again, I sent him, I sent him, Mugume Chaga, you go. He went. He, 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 he went and the soldiers were coming from drinking. He joined them and went and stayed near the barracks until the morning. There was no alert. So we came. Machine was a big success. We had 760 guns from there. This is Tumine's work, machine. So the, therefore, and Tumine, you have heard his, his, his gifts about music, about all, all those ones, I'm not very clear myself. But the transformation and the love for the Ankore cows. I remember Tumwine coming to, to Kisozi with these children, they were young, they were two. There was the, the boy and the, the girl and the boy. I think the, the girl was older. When you came to Kisozi, who, who the, the girl, who was the girl? Stand up and I see you, the Kisozi one. Oh, that, that's the one. Uh -huh. and, the, and then there was the, the boy who was young. So, Tumwine and these other, all these other people have joined the social economic transformation of that rural area. And uh, I'm sure when you go there, you, you will see what, what, what's, what, what, what they have done. And there are for people who are, who, who are insulting Tumwine, they are wasting their time because Tumwine is somebody who has accomplished, is somebody who has accomplished so much. Now, coming to, coming, coming to, Bishop Umhima's sermon, which I support, but I would like also to add my small addition. It is not true that before Christianity, Africans, Banyankore, did not believe in the uh, The, the, the continuation of life. For them, they believe in the continu continuation of life. What do you call it? P perpetuation? Perpetuation of life. They believe in, the, in perpetuation of life through the children. When you have children, you are eternal. That was our intent. So, and I don't think it is, it is correct to dismiss that. Because the Wanyankore knew that if you did not have children, 
entreche entreche your, your lineage is terminated so therefore I think the, the religion should find a way of accommodating that posterity through children eternity through children like Tumwin has not died he's here He is abundantly here. He was one, now he has got I don't know how many people there. Uh -huh. That's number one. Orzaro, Orzaro is part of eternity. Secondly, the Oktunga. Because why did God put us here on earth? If you wanted us only to be in heaven, why did he bring us here? He brought us here so that we, we also do something here. Improve here. So, the, what we do on earth really matters. So I think the church should find a way of encouraging that. Because if we don't do that, if we say, if you are rich, you are going to die. If you are poor, you are going to die. So what do we do now? We should all be poor so, so that we don't waste time. No. For me, I think the orzaro, the, the prosperity through children, the prosperity through wealth creation, the prosperity through, the, no, post, uh, uh, what do you call Huh? Eternity. Eternity through, through development. Eternity through, through descendants. Eternity through actions. Actions. We are now here quoting what St. Paul said. You, you have been quoting St. Paul here. What he wrote to Timothy what he wrote, to that, you know, up to now, 2,000 years, we are quoting what he said and what somebody did. So I think these three must be captured. Eternity through children, eternity through development, eternity through actions, good, good acts. Then, also, value addition. Because me, once I leave Mohozi, I leave, I am already, I'm already eternal here. Stand up. You see how eternal I am? I am here. <laughs> when I die, this, this, this person is here. She's called Kukundeka. She's called after her, her grandmother's name. But why should I? only go through Koko Ndeka and end up in Gehenna. I think that's what you should tell me. Why don't I also take that branch and while the Koko are continuing here, I also go to heaven. That, that very addition I totally support. I totally support. Right. So, therefore, what is my little message? You can hear, like, like for instance, this operation of Kabamba, it was our effort, but with God's direct intervention. Why was Riondo at home when, when I went to look for a car? Suppose he was not there, what would I have done? Maybe I would have uh, robbed a car <laughs> at gunpoint in Nyendo. That would have uh, an, uh, prematurely alerted the security forces and so on. But you can see it is, it, it is God's action. 
which was involved in supporting our actions. Therefore, my advice, always avoid evil. Like resisting Otafiri's <laughs> resisting Otafiri's evil idea <laughs> of being of being a leader who is dishonest. Now, and people who do that are people who want shortcuts. Because I told them, I said, let's hand let's hand in all the guns. If we need them, we shall get them. Of course, it costs us. It costs us a bit of effort to get them back, but we got them back. We got the guns of Kawamba back. We got the guns of uh, Masir back. We got the guns of uh, of Hoima back. We got all these guns. So, therefore, my conclusion, really, from watching what 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 I've been going through, is avoid evil. Believe in God. And as Tumine was saying, do the best, do what you like, what, what they were quoting, God will re reward you. Finally, Tumine was a resilient man. Because he was injured badly at Bukomero. I had gone out for a few months. When I came back, I found he had been injured. He was injured. He was brought by our network. Dr. Gwasaze, there were people who were looking after him. Dr. Gwasaze, they, they looked after him until he healed and, 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 and came back and joined us. He didn't say, because I've been injured, let me stay out. No. He came back and continued and has been continuing. And it's not only him, Saleh. Saleh was injured in both of all these men of these people, some of, the, of our people were injured. So that spirit of patriotism, of sacrifice, you the young people you should yeah. learn from it. Now finally, you can see the family now. The other day I was on patience's function who are looked at as uh, the Banyang, you know those Banyangkwere are, are, are fond of uh, don't worry about them uh, Jory, don't worry about those fellows these Ugandans uh, because when we are fighting, I mean especially the Banyangkwere for them they have a problem with their mouth when we are fighting, I mean they were calling us Everare that we were Everare vagabonds that we are vagabonds because we, we had left uh, jobs. Uh, a job of I mean, working under I mean, you call it a job. For us, we were despising those jobs. But for them, they, they, they thought that to be clever, you had to be under I mean, whether they kill you or what. For us, we, 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 we decided to fight. But we fought. By the time we came, we had what they were calling us. We are we, we, we were now no longer Berari, we are now Moses. We had changed from Weberari, from vagabonds, we had become Moseses, we had, we had become David who, who killed Goliath. Now, so don't, children, don't, don't think about those fellows who are talking nothing. The Tungam people have got their bad ways of talking. We are Gambok Shankena. As I said, something like nothing like something which doesn't. <laughs> So I am here to give this little testimony on General Tumwine, dying at 68, he was still young, but he had achieved a lot. And I'm, I'm very happy to hear people saying that he, he died a satisfied man. That's what Enos is the one who was saying that that he died a satisfied man. So with these few words, 
May the Almighty God rest his soul in eternal peace. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Uh, allow me, sir, inform the distinguished mourners that after the anthems, we shall depart in reverse order. And then, uh, before that, the church will see us out of here. And then the body will fly to Remkoma where service will start this afternoon. Then tomorrow, the, the final farewell, church will start at 10 in the Mkoma, and the burial will be done there. Uh, those who carried their roots, we do apologize that we couldn't have all of them laid, but we shall register them and arrange them at the Mkoma to be laid. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. Now I hand you back to the church. Thank you very much. We, before we do the recession on him. We are going to congregation that gathered here for the offering and this is the amount that we have brought together, eleven million four hundred and thirty three thousand seven hundred Uganda shillings and US dollars two hundred and twenty one. We want to take this opportunity on behalf of All Saints Cathedral Kampala to hand over this money to the family of Geno Tumine. May I have uh, a representative, preferably Daudi, to come and receive this money right now as we hand over to the family this contribution. As we prepare for that. We are going to have the anthems and then later on we'll have our recession of him. Transport has been arranged uh, for those wishing to go to Remkoma and uh, Colonel Nabo the UPDF director protocol uh, is aware about the vans. Please get in touch with him and you are, you are advised how the vans are going to move and when. Thank you. On behalf of the Minister of Defense and the Veterans Affairs and the entire UPDF fraternity, allow us to register our heartfelt appreciation for the love we have accorded the Tumina family and the UPDF family for the support you have given us. May God bless, bless you abundantly all of you. Band, answer me, please.
our recession of him is on page 19 of the order of service as we conclude this service. Please take our seats and, and the, the body leaves. The choir will be leading us in the recession of him. And then, uh, direction? Yes. Those that intend to travel to Remkoma, directions are you drive. Kololo, a place where he's been on very many occasions, uh, we will remember the memories of um, having him here on uh, these very grounds here as we do um, independent celebrations, as we do all the other uh, celebrations where General Eli Tumine has been um, a key player. We remember him very much so. And of course, uh, now this is uh, the last of those events um, where he um, is at Kololo, this time round, not um, as a living being, but his body laying um, in state. I just write here, a lifeless, as um, we've all noticed. General Eli Tumene is a man of uh, very many shades, just as you've heard from the different geologies, and of course from the different uh, persons. Very emotional, and uh, very many things said about him. As you can see, uh, the church is just concluding it, and of course the uh, final recessional hymn, as uh, you can hear, here, as um, General Tumene's body will be. Uh, might of the grounds by um, uh, General Zia, Lieutenant Generals and Major Generals who are uh, the uh, Paul Bearers and the Colonels, uh, Senior Officers of uh, the UPDF also, as uh, uh, the uh, Sword Bearers, leading uh, the procession and seeing General Tumine off here today. this a ceremonial um, Katia and um, one thing that is also very amazing about that is uh, the um, what, 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 what looks like what looks like a mamba here it's actually called the uh, chui I've um, just been told the kai is called the chui and uh, it's it's one of those that um, are produced at uh, the Nakasongola Luero Industries here in Uganda now these are the new uh, vessels that of course are replacing uh, the mambas and so this is a uh, typically Ugandan um, I'm only thinking that the spirit of General Eli Tumene must be content and of course very happy that um, a man who loved Uganda a nationalist was a pan-Africanist as he was um, because we were just told by the doctors that he had even decided not to go out of this country for any treatment and management he wanted to die um, in Uganda. So if um, all this is being done to him and uh, the cart, uh, the mamba, um, I've called it mamba, it's called chui, uh, on which is actually being driven, his body is being driven, is a uh, Ugandan made. 
um, I'm only thinking that the spirit of General Elliot Mwine uh, must be um, happy and content about that. But of course, um, as we see, um, this marks the end of uh, General Elliot Mwine, that um, the moment his body is driven and taken away um, out of here to Remitoma in Kazo, uh, where Barrio will be uh, tomorrow. Then, of course, the rest will be uh, memories about uh, this man called General Elliot Mwine. There have been lots of um, very emotional eulogies that we've had, especially from uh, uh, friends and um, family members. And of course, another very detailed um, and, and long story uh, by His Excellency the President of uh, who General Tumina was and his contribution. It's been amazing that um, very many people have tried to uh, find every other reason uh, to hate Tumwine. And um, from uh, what has been said here, uh, it just uh, means that uh, not so many people knew uh, the other side of Tumwine, especially uh, Tumwine, the liberator, Tumwine, the soldier, um, save for uh, the Tumwine that uh, many people have um, known in his last um, years or days um, uh, on earth. But that has been uh, the man. You had His Excellency the President talk about him and how God used him and um, his contribution, of course, to uh, the struggle. Uh, we will continue to remember and of course talk about him as um, a man who shot the first bullet, uh, which His Excellency the President and the Commander-in-Chief of the Forces here says um, it was not on uh, purpose, it was uh, not a plan that way, but it just helped them uh, to kickstart the war uh, that was later concluded with success in um, 1986. As you can see, um, General uh, Tumin is border there, uh, being uh, driven away, um, escorted by Lieutenant Generals and Major Generals of uh, the Uganda People's Defense Forces. And um, that will be uh, the end of um, General Eli Tumine. There will be uh, that uh, very final procession that is uh, normally accorded or done to um, senior officers of the forces, uh, to uh, persons uh, like um, General Eli uh, Tumine, as uh, you <coughs> can see um, just right here, as uh, he's uh, being uh, driven and taken um, away his body. Um, is uh, being driven to uh, Remitoma. Uh, alone, of course, we saw uh, the very many things that have been done here and happened here. And of course, uh, to thank um, the right um, uh, Reverend, uh, uh, right Reverend Doctor Edward Murima, uh, the retired uh, Bishop of uh, the Diocese of North Chigezi, who represented the Archbishop of the Church of Uganda, Dr. Kazimba Mugaru, who was not here. That's the final procession. As we uh, look to that and as we uh, continue seeing that, this is, um, these are the very last moments of uh, Geno Eli Tumwine, as we can all attest and see. Geno Eli Tumwine will be remembered um, by comrades in the Uganda People's Defense Forces. He will be remembered uh, by a majority of Ugandans. He will be remembered by quite very many people. General Eli Tumwine uh, served in the Parliament of Uganda for uh, over three and a half decades. And um, you can really notice that um, quite a number of people and several people that uh, interacted with General Eli Tumwine as uh, legislators and as uh, um, um, in different um, quarters or uh, categories, as uh, you can see. There it happens. Uh, the force that he loved so much, the force that he cherished so much, and uh, the force, we can say, that um, he contributed into building uh, to why it is. I am only very sure that um, General Tumine must have died a very happy man, that uh, from a rag, a tag, um, that um, captured Kampala um, on the 26th of March, and 1980, I beg your pardon, uh, 26th of January, 1986, uh, to one of the most vanguard armies um, on the continent, um, in the region, and um, as uh, you can see in the country, he must uh, be um, a happy man. He's always said it by himself that um, he's lived a full life, he's um, um, achieved what he wanted to achieve, and I think uh, that is uh, very uh, commendable. That is um, the journey of um, General Eli Tumwine, as um, you can see, His Excellency the President here, he walks to go and um, uh, condole um, with the children, with the widow, and with the family of um, General Eli Tomine. Um, there he goes to see uh, them, share what with them, to condole with them, commiserate with them, and uh, to share uh, these um, very final, somber, sad, and a very uh, tearful and emotional 
uh, moment as um, we can see. But it will be tomorrow in uh, Remiko in Kazo as um, we will um, still be there as a Uganda Broadcasting Corporation TV uh, to cover the event and to bring it live uh, to you there. God has just given us a very good weather here. Um, the mood is uh, somber, but of course the weather has also uh, been um, a very cool one. That um, it, It's not rained and uh, it's not been a scorching day. It's just been um, a very cool day. And um, the, the coolness also um, to many of us who uh, interpret um, things spiritually, we, we could actually um, also uh, make some uh, spiritual interpretations uh, to this, which um, I will not competently uh, delve into at uh, this particular time. It's only a morning and um, sending off a general Eli Tumwene, who uh, goes to rest. Uh, forever. We've had lots of um, uh, eulogies, of course, here from the different people, and of course uh, the causes of death, as um, was told to us by his personal doctor, uh, Dr. Omoding, who holds also um, a very special place in uh, the um, uh, family of uh, General Eli uh, Tumwene. What more uh, do we have except to say that uh, General Eli Tumwene will be uh, laid to rest tomorrow as um, you will continue to see and as you will continue uh, to uh, notice. His Excellency there um, has had that time uh, to uh, talk to the family, to share with the family, to commiserate with them, to console them, to condole with them and to share um, some thoughts with the family as we can um, ably see here. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, we appreciate and thank you so much for being a part of uh, the coverage here at um, Kololo Independence uh, Grounds. As um, you um, have noticed or seen, His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Uganda, and um, also uh, the Chief Mona for uh, this particular uh, day here today at uh, the Independence Grounds in Kololo, of course, um, concludes this day and um, leaves it just like that. Um, uh, the rest of the persons here who will be uh, traveling to Remy Koma uh, to go and uh, finally lay General Eli uh, to Mwine. As um, you can see, lots of things have been said here. And of course, um, they've been very emotional. Uh, there have been very emotional eulogies from uh, the family, from the friends, from the people um, who, of course, knew uh, General Eli Tumene. I just said it that, um, yes, um, the General Eli Tumene that many people are struggling to hate, uh, even in death, uh, may not have known much about Eli Tumene. But we only think that um, because this was the only moment and this was the only day uh, that um, all many of these things could be said about. About General Eli Tumene. We heard from the family, we heard from the friends, and of course we heard from uh, General Yoweri Kaguta Museveni, um, who at one time uh, taught Eli Tumene as a very young boy, he recruited him, uh, took him for training, cadet training, and of course um, he mentored him and trained him and brought him into uh, the force as you can ably uh, see. So um, we um, want to uh, just appreciate you as um, you get to know, <laughs> as you get to know, um, General um, Eli Tumene Tumene's body is just going to be um, air, air lifted uh, to uh, Remy Koma um, in Kazo, as uh, you can see, uh, with um, one of uh, the UPDF um, uh, choppers um, just right uh, there. Uh, so um, very shortly, uh, his body will be um, taken to a Kazo district, and of course, a barrio will be uh, there. We um, just want to appreciate and thank you so much uh, for uh, being part of uh, uh, today's broadcast here at um, Kololo Independence Grounds. Uh, my name is Jagenda Isemakola Zixoka. We thank you all, thank you all, and of course, uh, the team that has uh, uh, been here and there this particular day. 
We only can say a fair the well uh, to our general Elliot Mwine and to say he's only gone before all of us, but this is the way that we will all uh, go for um, God and um, our country as um, well, you can see. Now, that's um, the procession. Like I, I, I told you earlier on, um, his body is um, being taken and, of course, escorted on the Chui, um, the Chui car here. Uh, I'm actually calling it a car uh, with all the reservations, uh, but these are um, some of uh, the machines that are being produced at uh, uh, the Luero Industries in Nakasongola. This is um, what now replaces uh, the Mamba, and I've just been told it's actually called a Chui. And uh, it, it's one of those, of course, uh, that um, they use for uh, such celebrations or such ceremonies when a man of the stature of uh, General Eli Tumwine has um, died. His body is going to be um, airlifted um, in um, that uh, particular military chopper as um, you can see, and uh, of course, Um, if um, as just as um, you can uh, see, um, like I told you, uh, the pole bearers um, all at the rank of uh, lieutenant generals and major generals and uh, the sword bearers are um, uh, colonels and uh, senior officers of the forces, as um, you will be able to see. Now, this means that um, it, it actually marks um, General Eli Tumwine's uh, journey. Uh, the life is lived in Kampala. All the time he's been here and everything that is done, um, we are seeing him finally. Um, the, they've not been moments of um, um, making uh, views uh, onto the body, but of course just seeing his casket um, lay here with his lifeless body, now being taken and of course uh, flown out of here to um, Remikoma in uh, Kazo uh, district. This particular ground here, we remember General Eli Tumwine uh, for the very many years, for the very many things, and of course for his service to this country. We remember him that um, many and most of the times, of course, when we celebrated national events, national public holidays, um, just right here at Kololo, General Eli Tumwine was here. He was the master of ceremonies for the chancery uh, for very many uh, years. And uh, you remember very well that uh, Mr. Uh, General Eli Tumwine was one time, was one time dubbed as uh, uh, the, 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 maybe the minister for Meadows or the, the captain of Meadows or whatever it is for Meadows because um, always it was him as the master of ceremonies of uh, the chancery reading out um, the very many uh, lists and names of um, the medalists um, on these very grounds and it has been at this particular ground here today where uh, General Eli Tumene has had his final journey as um, he goes the rest about General Eli Tumene shall be I just talked about the rest about General Eli Tumene is what we will read in the books the rest about General Eli Tumene is what we will continue to hear from the people that grew with him that worked with him that uh, served with him that um, did many of the things with him as um, you can uh, see very shortly, um, General Eli Tumine's body will be flown out of um, um, Kololo here, uh, taken to uh, Remi Toma, Remi Koma in um, Kazo, a uh, district where Barrio uh, will be. General Eli Tumine, like we said, has been a man of um, very many shades and he will be remembered uh, for very many things by, of course, uh, very many people. Those um, in the performing arts industry will also have something to remember about General Eli Tumwene because he's been one of them, uh, performed with them, and of course uh, done quite a number of things. And um, very uniquely that um, you notice that General Eli Tumwene also inspired uh, very many other young um, officers and men um, in the Uganda People's Defense Forces uh, to uh, get into singing, to start singing, and of course to um, energize the band that was there. He loved singing, he loved doing it, and um, to many of us who have been with him on uh, many of uh, these uh, government uh, functions, we will remember uh, very well that um, there is a particular song that General Eli Tumine loved, um, Chino Chechesera, Chetulino Kurwana, Mobisere Yomumaso, Tuberene Mirembe. It's one of his songs that um, it, he used to punctuate it whenever he was um, at um, any ceremony, he was at any event. Uh, so, um, General Eli Tumine, like we said, the man that um, we will live to remember for everything 
that he has done to uh, con contribute uh, to Uganda's uh, development, Uganda's stability, Uganda's growth, Uganda's socio-economic transformation, which, of course, His Excellency the President uh, brought out very, very clearly as uh, a man who sought after a socio-economic transformation at a very tender and at a very young age. Tumine um, goes to rest. Uh, Tumine joins um, his ancestors. Tumine goes uh, the way that um, all of us will go. And of course, Tumine joins all the other uh, very uh, many uh, members of the family of the UPDF who went um, before him. And of course, um, that's where it is. The count goes on, but of course, um, every one of us has got their own contributions. Every one of us, of course, um, has their own um, uh, talents, their own gifting, their own callings uh, to um, serving uh, the country, serving humanity and above God. General Eli Tumwine was a man who accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior and of course um, as you also uh, continue uh, to notice. So just because of that um, we want to uh, thank you very much for being part of um, uh, the broadcast uh, that has happened here at um, the Kololo Independence uh, Grounds. As um, we um, say goodbye and uh, fare thee well to uh, General um, Eli uh, Tumwine, who we shall never see again. I will just end with uh, um, a scripture um, in um, uh, the Bible um, where King David lost his son and uh, when the servants came to him and told him the son has died, David said, give me food to eat, give me um, oil to, to, to nourish myself, um, let me bathe, give me water to bathe and let me eat. And everybody was surprised that even um, after all that, how did he um, again get into that? But um, eventually, um, eventually he said, because I know that uh, where my son has gone is where I will go because he cannot return uh, to me. So the only encouragement that we have is um, we know that um, where he has gone is where we will go. Um, he cannot return to us, but us to go to where he um, has uh, uh, been. To all of you, our viewers, on um, our live stream, we want to appreciate and thank you so much for being part of the broadcast here as uh, we officially send over General Eli uh, Tumwine. 
It's been a very long day, a very somber day, and of course a day full of ideologies and uh, lots of things that uh, many people did not know about General Eli uh, Tumwini. This marks the end and of course uh, the journey of uh, General Eli Tumwini here. His body um, is being uh, lifted to a uh, Remy coma in Kazo where he will be laid to rest uh, tomorrow at uh, his ancestral home in the western part of uh, Uganda. We want to wish you all the best for tonight and uh, wishing that we will see you and be with you you and again enjoy your company tomorrow as we get to Remy Coma. Forgot on my country, stay blessed and um, fare thee well, General Eli Tumune.